So in this clip, I'll show you how to use the Wolfram online platform to uh, check your work by variate problems. So we'll go to the uh, Wolfram online platform, wolframcloud.com, go to the development platform. Hopefully you have signed up and signed in. So I have my files in home and I prepared <coughs> a file here. Um, as a reminder, so in these files you can write text and code. Uh, you can always, between elements, you can, uh, if you get this little horizontal cursor, if you click on this, a plus arises, and then you can choose whether you want Wolfram language input, that's the meat of the stuff, the calculation type stuff, or whether you want to write plain text, or this will lead you to headings and stuff. So I've written all of this already. Um, so let's say you want to work with partial derivatives. You have some practice problem and you solved it yourself and now you want to test whether you've been right. So to demonstrate how this works, let's use a function, a pretty straightforward bivariate function, uh, log of x1 plus two times log of x2. Now, of course, you know how to calculate the partial derivatives for this one. That's pretty straightforward. The partial derivative for uh, with respect to x1 is 1 over x1. Partial derivative with respect to f2 is 2 over x2. And you can continue to calculate second order partial derivatives. And they're all listed here. Right? f11 is negative 1 over x1 squared f22 is negative 2 over x2 squared and all the others are zero. So it's a problem which we know already and let's see whether we can recover these results with the Wolfram platform, hopefully to give you the confidence that even if you don't know the result for sure and you've calculated something and you want to check it, you know how to check it with the uh, Wolfram platform. So here is our function log x1 plus 2 times log x2. If you want to find derivatives, you already know from the univariate problem that the function we use is the d function. By the way, if you uh, if you hover in here or one, once you write a function d, uh, you should get, uh, of course, not now, let me see. Um, when you hover over it, you sometimes get this and you can find information for that function and uh, you can find some help on how to apply it. But for the very straightforward use, so you have the D function first, the function which you want to find the derivative in. Now, if you have two variables, when we had a univariate function, we would, for instance, just say um, x1 and then the first derivative. But now we have two variables. So we put in curly brackets x1 and x2, and then we want the first order partial derivative. So we know that there are two first order partial derivatives. So when we run this by pressing shift enter or by going to evaluation, evaluate cells, I like the shift enter, shift enter, the result we get is two results, one over x1 and two over x2. These are the two first order partial derivatives. And of course, they're exactly what we found here or what we already know to be true. So this is how you get first order partial derivatives. You can actually, if you want to, and that's what I do here, is you can save these two into two objects. So if I run the, the right hand side here is exactly the same as above. But now I say the result of this, which is these two objects, 1 over x1 and 2 over x2, save them into fp1 and fp22. And you do it in, in this way. So you run this. And from now onwards, if you use fp1, then Wolfram knows uh, what he has in mind is 1 over x1. So now, of course, once you have the first order partial derivatives in a bivariate problem, you may be interested in finding stationarity points. And you know, we get those by setting the first order partial derivatives to zero. So that's what we do here. We use the solve function, okay, to solve a system of equations or one equation. Here we have a system because we have two first order uh, derivatives, fp1 and fp2, because I saved them here. And we want to set both of them to zero. And this is the way how you do it, okay? 
fp1 equal to zero in any sort of most programming language if you want to force something and set it equal to a value you have to use this double equal sign and and just means and that's just how this works if you go to the help for solve you will see examples for that and fp2 the second first order partial derivative should also be equal to zero and we want to solve with respect to x1 and x2 so let's try that now we get this empty result what that means is that there is no stationary point okay so we have no stationary point. And if you think about this function, and we will look at it later in, uh, in a moment, that makes totally sense. This function doesn't have a stationary point. If you had one, you would find the solution here. So what about the second order partial derivatives? Um, I will now, similarly to here, I will save these results immediately. In fact, I will save them in an object called h for the Hessian because we know second order derivatives produce the Hessian. So the actual command is very similar. Okay, d again for derivatives. Here's our original function. We want derivatives with respect to x1, x2, but now not the first order derivatives, but the second one, so comma two. So let's do this. And what you see here is a result. And we have four results, basically. Um, we know that because we have four second order partial derivatives f11, f12, f21, and f22. And here they are f11, f12, f21, f22. And they're all saved in h. And of course, these results are again exactly the results which we know be to be true for this particular problem. So, where are we here? You know, you may be asked to, cake to to figure out whether a Hessian is positive definite, positive semi-definite, negative definite, negative semi-definite, or indefinite. And what you need, an element in this calculation, is you need the determinant. You also need to look at the signs of the diagonals, you go to the lecture notes to remind yourselves. But one thing you need is the determinant. So let's see what the determinant is. The command here is det for determinant, okay, and then in square brackets h. Now run this, and here is the result for the determinant. And note, is this is still a function of x1 and x2. So the Hessian changes for different combinations of x1 and x2. So. You could now, of course, if you had a stationary point, you could re and wanted to evaluate whether a function is convave, concave or convex at a particular point, you could plug in values for x1 and x2 and calculate, uh, and calculate that. Now let's also look at a function. Function plots are incredibly useful to visualize problems. And you can usually use them to check whether your calculations regarding stationarity points, for instance, are correct. So let's try and plot this function we've been working with. The command is called plot3d because we are trying to emulate a 3D environment. Plot3d, the function, and then you have to tell Wolfram in what range for x1 and x2 you want to plot the function. So for both x1 and x2 I use negative 5 to 5. This isn't the best as we will see in a moment but it's perhaps quite instructive. So we run this, so shift enter again. And here is our function. And you can immediately see that the function is only calculated for a part of the, uh, the range of values which are indicated here. And the reason being that, of course, we are looking at log functions. And for log functions, we need positive inputs. Wolfram is clever enough to realize that, so it just ignores the negative areas. But really, what would have been better is to, for instance, only look at positive ranges. Okay, so here, and that looks like a much nicer picture. Okay, so this is really, the, so these few elements, plot 3D, determinant, uh, solve, and the D function will help you to check a lot of your work uh, for bivariate problems.
Enjoy.